Good morning everyone. Welcome to my pad. Well, I have to say I've looked at all of your photos and I am indeed astonished. I thought I had set you such a hard challenge that there was no way that you were going to meet the challenge. But by gum, by golly, you have. I am indeed impressed. So let's have a look at your images. Let me give you my first thoughts. Good morning again. Well, we're having a look at the photographs now, and I'm particularly impressed with Bill's imagination in these three photos. I know we're looking at number one, which has uh, got the juices flowing. I can almost taste that whiskey. And I very much like the way that the two glasses are positioned, showing the Scotsman through the first glass uh, and looking at him on the uh, second glass. I like the perspective. I very much like the uh, composition with the diagonal from the bottom left up to the top right. And the light is very, very good, giving, have you noticed, a rather nice, um, rather alluring colour on the tablecloth down below the glass. I like that very much. Uh, I should have said down below the bottle of whisky. Um, that uh, orange colour is coming through very nicely. So well done, well done on that one. Uh, we'll proceed without ado to Bill's second one, where quite clearly he's used a very slightly different exposure, uh, giving us a richer colour in the whisky, and he's remembered to put some whisky in the glass. And so that makes a very good triangular composition. Once again, look at the composition from the bottom left corner, to the top right and uh, completing the triangle the glass with the whiskey in it so we have a triangular composition and I'm impressed with that let's move on to number three which I think is the best of the three again a triangular composition Bill has changed the tablecloth for something white which is a great improvement there's still a little of the um, hatching on the tablecloth showing on the right hand side and at the bottom of the bottle on the left hand side we have a very very good choice of aperture such that the glass with the whiskey in it and the bottle and its writing are in focus but the curtain at the back is out of focus deliberately and is well achieved so I like that very much good composition that's the best of the three Bill well done Brenda, what on earth is it? I do not know. It's intriguing, and I like a photo which is intriguing. It looks like a hand or a straw or a finger on the right-hand side, and I can only think that it's, it's, well, Royal Society for the Protection of Muppets, because I have no idea what that is in the glass, but it's well seen, I like it, and it ticks the box of making David laugh. So well done, that's a goodie. Brenda 2, through the glass, in what I take to be a shop selling, who knows what, Christmas decorations on a cake stand. Very nicely done. Have you noticed, ladies and gentlemen, the reflection in the baubles on the top shelf? Now, had Brenda focused in on those perhaps we have another photo lots of potential in this lots and lots of potential very well seen and I think that's worth going back to and having another go at if the shop still is selling baubles which I doubt Brenda 3 here is one magnificently well composed photo ladies and gentlemen what do we have here a frame within a frame. Look at that railing, the hole, as it were, in the top of the railing, showing through the beach huts in the background. Very nicely done. The, uh, the photo is bookended by the life boy on the left-hand side, and the end of the railing, as it were, on the top right-hand side, holding in the image itself of the beach huts. 
one small point I would raise with you is what did you focus on? Now, if you were naughty, and I know that you never, ever, ever use automatic, if you were to use automatic, then your camera will focus on the closest item, that being the railings themselves. If you override that, you can choose to focus on the beach huts and leave the railings slightly soft. So you have the potential of two photos there. I particularly like that one. I'm not being critical, but I am, I hope, being constructive. It's a good one, Brenda. Diana one, lovely. Cherries in lemonade. Very well seen. I love it. Very, very intriguing. What's holding the cherries in? Why aren't they floating? How are you keeping them down? I love it. Bubbles on the cherries. Excellent. Nice composition. Diagonal composition with the stems of the cherries going to very nearly the top left-hand corner. Love it. Through glass, clearly they're inside some sort of glass container. And I'm seeing a little bit of hazing on the lower cherry in the near to bottom left hand corner which is interesting very interesting indeed the background is beautifully out of focus I love it well taken well seen well done Diana 2 the helmet one of the most difficult things to photograph is shiny metal and you have done it beautifully Shiny metal, as we all learned when we went to the church previously, can give us great problems. But you've chosen a very, very good choice of aperture and shutter speed. Did you use a tripod? I don't know. But it's pin sharp and I like it. I can see, and I'm sure others can see, the way in which the focus drops off across to the right-hand side of what might be called the cheek or the ear protectors on the helmet it's a beautifully rendered record shot well taken and most of all no reflections from the glass inside the cabinet so well done on that down a three some sort of ape I guess about to run out of the picture now well taken I guess he's behind glass. I guess he's in a zoo somewhere. And had you had the opportunity, which is dead easy to say and not so easy to do, to put him slightly further to the left, i.e. turn your camera a little bit to the right, giving us some space into which this monkey can leap, run, walk or move, that would have been even better. A good choice of aperture, making the background quite indistinct, quite soft, and that's exactly what we want. Clearly the depth of field is really quite shallow, so his hand nearest us in the middle of the photo is out of focus. That's okay with me. The other hand is also out of focus in the bottom right hand side, but his eye is pin sharp, and that's the important thing. Not easy taking pictures of animals, and you did well here, so well done. Doreen 1, again, a good record shot, having overcome the problem of reflections in glass, if this helmet was in glass. However, you do face the problem of shiny metal and the reflections off of the top of the helmet and the brightness of the background. So how could we have overcome that? Well, you can't walk around with a, a black sheet and get your assistant to hold it up. But maybe you could get an assistant to stand behind it, holding his jacket up or just plain getting in the way of the somewhat distracting backgrounds. Always, ladies and gentlemen, look around the edge of your photo. I always say take lots, but in this case I'm going to say take them carefully. Look around the edge, check what's happening in the background and see if the background is more interesting than the subject. Clearly our eyes are being taken to the bright light in the top left hand side there and the 
I don't know what it is. The wall, is it behind? Maybe a display board which is brighter than the subject itself. So well taken, well done, good record shot, and lots to learn from doing it. Well done, Doreen. Doreen 2, once again, uh, we have a, a uniform, uh, well lit, I suspect it's ambient lighting. Um, had you put a flash on it, it would not have been so interesting, because a flash from your camera would have gone straight into the uniform, giving us what we call flat lighting. But we can see quite clearly from the lighting in the museum that there is a shadow cast from the left to the right. So this is giving a three-dimensionality to the image of the subject, which I very much like. So whenever you're taking pictures of people, do not put the flash on the camera. Put it off to one side or don't use it at all and use ambient lighting to give a roundness to the shape, a three-dimensionality. Some of the um, photos that one sees from the Happy Snapper Brigade, they've used the on-camera flash, and it isn't good. It isn't good. But this is good. Good record shot. Shot. Well lit. I like it. Quite difficult, this one, Doreen taking photos of something behind glass in a frame without getting reflections in the glass itself of what's behind you. So well done. And you'll notice, ladies and gentlemen, the technique that Dorian has used is standing very slightly off-center from the, uh, the frame of these medals and the poppy, such that the reflection of the background isn't showing in the glass. We have one or two highlights on the frame itself, difficult to avoid. They don't trouble me in the least, but it certainly teaches us something. Stand very slightly to one side, and we won't get the reflections showing in the glass. Good record shot. I like it. Iris number one, through the wine glasses, with the lights behind. Very well seen. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, look at the number of glasses Iris has chosen. It should be the magic number three, and I'm seeing four wine glasses. Well, at least two wine glasses and two um, long glasses, let's say. Um, beautifully taken, with the focus suitably made onto the wine itself in the closest glass. Can we learn from this by looking at the background? Look at the background past the wine glass on the right-hand side, and you will see that Iris has chosen such an aperture that that background is dropping out of focus, which is ideal, absolutely ideal. I love the way that the light is coming through the wine glass, and I'm getting little specular lights in the wine glass. Now, as I've said before, it is possible on your camera to choose such an aperture as may allow the uh, point sources of light to become starbursts. i leave you to find out how to do that. I know Iris knows how to do it. I particularly like the way that the lights are reflected in the shiny tabletop down below. So, yes, very well seen photo, a good experimental uh, tabletop photo, and I'm impressed with it. Should we really have cut the top of the nearest wine glass off, would it be better better to have retained that or take the top off altogether? I don't know. It's up to you. You're the photographer. You do what you like. But I think perhaps both of those are opportunities that we could have taken. I like that photo very much indeed. I'll move on to iris number two, which is again taken through a window uh, and we have um, some distorted images through these um, strange glass panels in the pub uh, pub sign outside I'm liking that a lot uh, I'm wondering whether the most intriguing images are those in the bottom three panes and had Iris chosen, well, let's just talk about the middle one, 
What a good photo that would have been. Just that middle pane looking through the... Uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, the old-fashioned glass with the with the um, shapes in it, and giving us a really intriguing photo. I love that. The one on the left-hand side seems to have a stick man walking along with a, a yellow balloon following him. Again, that would have made a terrific photo on its own. Similarly, on the right, it almost looks like a, a church or a building or something across the other side of the road. Three good photos lots of potential and think i think iris uh, your homework is to go back to that same pub i can nearly read the sign in the top pane and um, take those three photos again and uh, intrigue us with what you get on another occasion yeah i like that it's well seen well taken i don't think the top three panes are doing anything for me i think as it stands i've cropped those top three panes off altogether uh, but I'd definitely send you and Peter back to take those three images again. Well done. Like it. Iris number three, the, um, I don't know what it is, a, a water jug with a little little man behind it, beautifully distorted. I love it. It's showing exactly the sort of uh, challenge uh, to a photographer that I'd expect you to see. Look at the background and ask ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, is the background in focus or out of focus, and how would we want it to be? I think on this occasion I'd like to bring the jug and the little man further away from the wallpaper or the whatever it is, um, table mat, so the table mat is further away, and uh, but we still retain the sharpness on the jug, and the uh, the little man distorted through the the bulb of the glass. So very well seen. It's quite a challenge to do this, wasn't it? And I think you've achieved it. Well done, Iris. Janet one. Hailstones or sleet on the window, and through that pattern on the window, the scene beyond. Very well seen. I like it. Good composition. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, the horizon is on the third. Notice that the whole of the photo is bookended, or at least based, by the sleet that's occurred uh, and accumulated in the bottom of the window. And we're intrigued by it. Look at the tree and the distortion of the rain, the sleet, the wet on the window. I like that a lot. That's well seen, well taken, good exposure and you've focused on the sleet beautifully. Now, if you just pick in any one of those water droplets, you can see a little image inside the water droplet, which is well seen and well taken. I like that a lot. Well done. Janet Tu, I have no idea what on earth that is. Is it a light in the ceiling? If it is, it's very well taken and very well seen. And, of course, it is through glass. The light from the bulb is showing through that glass lampshade, is it? And giving us that wonderful pattern on what I take to be the ceiling. Very nicely taken. Very well worthwhile experimenting with different exposures and choosing the best. Use your camera to meter the scene. Take one photo on that setting then override that setting, go off of that dreaded automatic, go on to manual, take one shot, one stop uh, more exposed, and one stop, uh, and another photo one stop below. So take three, we call them bracketed photos, and A, maybe choose the best one, but B, definitely learn from the experience. I think that's a very well-seen photo, and it's got lots to teach us. If we were to talk about composition, what would we suggest? Would we move the lampshade onto the third? Do we need the whole of the lampshade? How would it be if we only took a quarter of the lampshade? We know it's all there. Do we need to see all of it? How then would the pattern on the ceiling appear? That's a good pattern. This is a picture of the pattern on the ceiling. Do we really need all of the lampshade? 
I think that's got a lot to teach us. Thanks, Janet. Likes that one. Well done. Janet 3. What on earth is that? I do not know. It's incredible. I love the way that whatever the yellow is, is made a sort of face that made me laugh. And I love looking around the outside of it, trying to work out what on earth it is. Now, I'm going to guess that it's some sort of paperweight. It's a glass sphere with a blob of yellow somehow moulded into it. And it's really remarkable. I love it. Once again, I'm interested in what I can see through it. And down at the bottom, there's some blue and white and red showing up. And I'm intrigued by that. So I think, perhaps, there's lots of potential in that photo. And again, do we need the whole thing? Could we have focused through it on what's at the background and made a photo out of that? It's extraordinary. I love, in particular, the uh, quality of the texture inside the yellow shape. I have no idea what it is. Please tell me afterwards what on earth it is, because I'm intrigued. And that ticks my box. That's very good. Well done. Mo one, another glass paperweight. Ladies and gentlemen, look closely at this. You see that the image that we're seeing of the candle is inverted. Isn't that interesting? Now, that's what your camera lens does. The scene that you see, your camera lens takes the light from it and inverts it. So the actual image on the sensor, dare I call it the film, will be inverted upside down. Really well seen. I love the way that Mo has made this candle in the... Uh, in the sphere sharp while still showing the candle in the background in reality quite softly focused that's really good once again where should it be mo well david knowing you i'm suspecting that you would say that it should be on the third am i right on the third <laughs> <laughs> so again really well seen composition think about composition focus he's achieved it he's got that exactly in the focus and I, I like it very much Mo2 this made me laugh Father Christmas having a shave in the shaving mirror really good quite difficult to do do you focus on the Father Christmas or do you focus on the image in the mirror now, they are actually different distances. And if I were to guess, the Father Christmas was, let's say, 10 inches away from the lens, whereas the Father Christmas in the mirror is 10 inches plus twice the distance between the mirror and the Father Christmas. So that might be 20 inches away. So he's achieved a depth of field between 10 and 20 inches. That's 10 inches depth of field. And that's quite difficult to do. Now, I know you know how to do it, but think about it. How would you do it without getting one of them in focus and the other one out of focus? They are both pin sharp. Very well done. If you don't know the answer, ask me later. Mo3. An interesting bottle of scent. Homs, is it? And... Uh, What's really fascinating is the way that the lights going through that glass has shed a shadow, cast a shadow, that we can actually read the writing on the bottle. Very well done. It's quite dramatic, dramatic composition, dramatic lighting. It's incredibly difficult to take photos of shiny metal without getting specular reflections. So the lid of the bottle, you'll see as a specular reflection. Of course, Mo will say that he intended that. Well, OK, that's fine. There are Photoshop tricks that one can use to make that into a starburst. And uh, even Mo could do it without Photoshop. And even Suzanne could do it without Photoshop. Turn that into a starburst, and that could be fantastic. In camera, Suzanne. In camera. I like it a lot. It's well seen, well composed, very dramatic. It's almost Alfred Hitchcock, isn't it? 
well done. Ray one, the helmet, I guess through glass in a cabinet, no reflections, so we've achieved not getting reflections on the glass of what's behind us. So that's very good. I also like the fact that uh, Ray has stood very slightly off to one side, allowing the ambient lighting to cast a shadow on the background and give us a three-dimensionality. Very good, well-taken, well-seen record shot. The powder flask, the scrimshaw, the bone or the, the tusk of, a, of a, an animal with this painting on it. It's clearly in a glass cabinet. Clearly we are not getting reflections and that's an achievement. Well done Ray. The difficulty is always avoiding reflections in the glass. You've moved the camera very slightly off at an angle and I like that a lot. It's given us a composition from the bottom left up to the top right corner and it would have been oh so easy just to put the camera straight and level and get the shelf level and that would have destroyed the composition. I like turning the camera through in this case 20 or 30 degrees. It's achieved something very well done. Ray 3, the helmet, no, the hat with the pom-pom on it again. Good choice of position, good three-dimensionality, a good record shot. Suzanne, well I take it that this is a an aquarium or some such. What I'm seeing is a very nice letterbox composition, which is intriguing. Down at the bottom I am seeing something like a, a manta ray uh, or a skate, is it? Um, somewhere in the middle, I can't work out, is it another tank with fishes in it? And in the distance, a person holding their camera up, taking a picture of me taking a picture, or in this case, Suzanne taking a picture. Very well seen, not easy to take, particularly difficult, and look at the lights in the ceiling. Can you see the hint of a starburst? Now, your task is to find out how to turn those into real starbursts in camera. I guess you're going to tell me you took it on an iPad, whatever one of those is, but you, I guess can control the shutter, the aperture, and the ISO, in which case you could turn those into starbursts. Well seen, well taken, intriguing photo. I think perhaps there's three photos in this. One would have been the, uh, the, the skate or the manta ray, whatever it is down at the bottom. One would have been the ceiling, just the ceiling with those receding uh, lights turned into starbursts and the other one is the one you have so yes very good well done well seen Suzanne 2 so here we have not one Suzanne not two not three not four but hundreds of Suzannes receding through these angled mirrors isn't good I love it compositionally ladies and gentlemen notice bottom right hand corner we're led into the picture, up on the diagonal to the left. We then notice Suzanne looking in from the right to the left, receding, getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, a, what a well-seen photo. I love it. Now, thing to learn. We, at least in England, write from left to right. So if we were able to flip that photo so that the image of Suzanne is coming in from the left and taking photos in to the right it would be an even better photo just flip it left to right don't know if you can do that on an iPad I guess you can you're a clever girl great picture I love it very intriguing very well done love it Suzanne 3 now I take it well it looks like anyway it's an image in the rear view mirror of a car. But how on earth you've got the black all the way around it, I do not know. 
Or were you in a coal bunker or a pillbox looking out through a window? Either which way, it's a frame within a frame. I like it. I like it a lot. The horizon at the top of the mountains is so close to the to the top of the frame that we're not distracted by overly bright sky and boring clouds. The uh, horizontal at the edge of the lake is a third of the way up, so it's well composed. And there's something on the right, is it a sign? Yes, there's a sign of some description, which is almost perfectly placed on the third up and on the third in from the right, giving us a, a, an excellent composition. So well done on that. Would be nice if you could do the same thing again on a different day when it's more contrasty. So go back when it's sunny or when it's raining or even better still when it's snowing. Actually, I'm intrigued by that photo. Do please tell me afterwards how you did it. It's a goodie. Terry won. Now, I think that's very good. The gentleman inside the office, through the window, did he know he was being photographed? Who cares? Doesn't matter. I'm very intrigued by this photo. I like it a lot. Gentleman is on the third up and the third in. The photo is really, I guess, two photos because the window panes on the left are quite separate from the window panes on the right and both would be excellent as images. Very, very well seen. I don't know if it's posed. I don't care if it is. I think it's a really good photo. Uh, as far as cropping is concerned, could we have kept a little bit of the chocolate brown window framework on the left so as to bookmark the uh, bookend of the photo on the left-hand side? Um, I like the way you've kept the chocolate brown on the right-hand side, bookending it on the right, and you've kept it at the bottom, but we've lost it at the top. A little lesson here that we're beginning to get uh, some reflection in the glass at the top left hand side just the thing to try to avoid and perhaps a little bit of cropping there would have helped how about cropping the top half of the photo off altogether and just making it a letterbox how then and I think it's it's intriguing I like that image it's well seen it's well taken and quite intriguing it tells a story if you can take a photo that tells a story you're on a winner it ticks the box well done Terry another fascinating photo Terry too a photo in a mirror <laughs> of some bright shiny armory armor um, yes like it I like it a lot um, clearly it's a record photo but it's well composed. It's not just straight on to the armour. It's seeing it in a mirror. Yeah, I like that. Well seen. Not everyone would have seen that or taken that. Cropping. Should we crop off the brickwork on the left-hand side? I would be quite happy for you to do that. Turning it more into a letterbox. Should we crop off the brickwork on the right? Perhaps not, because it sets it into a setting of a mirror on a wall with a, a suit of armour in the reflection uh, in the mirror. So, yeah, well done. I like that. Well seen, Terry. Terry 3. That's a goodie. I do like that. Now, what aperture did you choose? Did you choose an aperture suitable to keep the rose in the magnifying glass in focus and its stem in focus as well. Is there a potential that? What else could we do? Could you have chosen a wider aperture? What was the widest aperture on your lens? Was it about f4, f2? What would that have done? Would that have given us a shallow depth of field, allowing the rose in the magnifying glass to be in focus, but its stem to be out of focus? That perhaps would have added something, but I like that. The whole idea of that, I think, is great. Well done, Terry. Yeah, like it. 
Jeff through a vase of my garden with the gardener in the top right hand corner very well seen I like it now what did you focus on did you focus on the distant the infinity setting on your lens I suspect you did leaving the vase to give us a rather blurry out of focus image what else could we have done could we have focused more on the view through the vase leaving the background to be out of focus would that have given us enough depth of field a shallow enough depth of field maybe if you'd also opened up your aperture to the widest possible perhaps on your lens f3 f4 something like that so as to make the image through the vase as sharp as possible and the image each side of the vase out of focus I like the composition, top right and top left, bringing us in these edges of the vase, bringing us into the image seen through the vase. Very well done, nicely taken, well done Jeff. Now I particularly like Jeff too, this image of, uh, well, a lady and, uh, now what is that, is that a, a bottle of whiskey or is that some table mat with uh, some photos on it which are beautifully distorted by the glass well seen but a tabletop there I like it two potential photos one could have been just the table mat seen through the wine glass and the other could have been just the lady seen through the wine glass I like it had you put some wine in it as well a little red wine maybe a third of the way up that would have been very good indeed. Had the lady had a glass of wine, or a bottle, or both, of wine, seen through the wine glass, and the wine glass a third full. There's lots of potential in that. Homework, Jeff. Do it again. Through a wine glass, with the lady, holding a wine glass in the distance. Yeah, I like that. Well seen. Imaginative. It's not a record shot. That's an imaginative shot. Well done, Jeff. Yep, I want you to do that again. Jeff 3, the paperweight, it's a little bit out of focus. Uh, and I'm not sure what is in focus here, but it's well seen. Again, lots of potential. Not sure why we've got some sweeteners and some biscuits in the background. Always look around the outside of your photo. When you're looking through your viewfinder or you're using the screen at the back, see what else is in the photo perhaps um, some uh, kitchen paper just put behind this would have been uh, useful um, look for the focus I suspect your camera was trying to focus on the the red painting or, or glass inside the paperweight um, lots and lots of potential there moving the camera forward moving it back trying to look for uh, getting the focus on the subject. What's the subject? Well, I guess it's whatever that bubble is. Is it inside the, the glass? Or is it the distorted view of the patio doors coming through on the right-hand side? Either which way, lots and lots of potential there. So, homework number two for you, Jeff. Do it again, and do lots of them uh, with a different focus on each one. Very good example of uh, experimental tabletop. And I think we can all learn from that. Well done, Jeff. You've taught us something. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I wondered whether you'd like this particular shot. Um, clearly, the camera never lies, and it was an opportunistic grab shot. And um, yes, well, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it got you got you interested in taking photos through glass. Another one through the windscreen when the rain was sheeting down of a tree and some beach huts. It happens to be in West Mersey and uh, it's a rather small image, I'm afraid. I must have reduced it before I sent it to Mo. But uh, I hope again that gave you some ideas of things that you could take which were different from the, the standard through my garden window. Um, so well done, everyone. I'm impressed with the images you sent in. 
I thought I'd given you such a hard task that you uh, you would have to struggle to do it, but you've all met that um, that target. You've all achieved really, really well, and I am impressed. Of course, you don't know what your next challenge is yet, but you will soon. I'm going to make it hard because you're so darn good. Let me just say thank you to Mo for doing this uh, production, and uh, thank you all for sending in these wonderfully challenging photos. You've all ticked several boxes and I am indeed pleased with all of you. Well done. Well ladies and gentlemen, you have certainly achieved a magnificent goal. Your level of achievement is second to none. I am indeed impressed. Of course you don't know what the next challenge is, but you will soon and I have to say it's deliberately going to be hard. So well done. I look forward to seeing your attempts at the next challenge. And before I go, let me say thank you to the videographer who eventually has got the videographing correctly. Okay, bye now.